All right. So, uh, welcome to everybody, all the listeners and viewers. Um, I, I run the company uh, Electra EV that's uh, promoted by uh, Mr. Ratan Tata in his personal capacity. Um, we grew up uh, in the Electra, I mean, in the EV space in a certain way. So, already Amitabh has said the context. Well, I'm not going to repeat that. Uh, so, Priyakshi, next slide, please. So keeping it very relevant to uh, how do we go about indigenizing or, or localizing the entire supply chain, uh, framework of the discussion will be what first experiments did we conduct? So at the bottom of the slide, you can see uh, what was the rationale, what was the kind of uh, summary of our learnings that I'll present to you, and what were the shortfalls? Where are we now as a, so we are an EV powertrain company. We are, uh, uh, I guess, similar to, uh, Alti Green, but we are a little bit different because our focus is somewhat different, which I will come to in a minute. Um, and, uh, you know, we're three year old. I think all companies in this space have got to be young. I don't think there are any old companies in this, especially in Indian context. Um, uh, so we're all young. Uh, and uh, so Electra EV is about 160 people. Uh, we've got uh, a little over half of our people are dedicated to manufacturing and supply, supply side. And the other half, a little less than half, actually 40% of us are engineers and, and people who design and develop uh, and at that stage. So where are we now in that supply chain? What is the evolution of that and what, what strategies do we follow? And what future possibilities exist more, mostly for us as an organization? And, but also it kind of generalizes to you guys who are looking at other choices and options and what goals should you take up? So. I've tried to keep it uh, based on what lessons we have learned, but yet try to give some messages to, to people who want to get into this space. So Priyaki, next slide. So um, just some classification and, and some context setting. For us, our lessons have been all in the four wheel passenger car space. That's how we grew up, that's how we were kind of commissioned to do the nano experiment first uh, with the view of urban and, and city mobility as being critical, but also light utility vehicles or light commercial vehicles, as uh, Amitabh has rightly pointed out, that there's a bigger space in the commercial uh, last mile carrying goods to uh, carrying goods or food or vegetables or <clears throat> whatever you have <clears throat> to the end customer or to the end company that wishes to get that. Also, for us, the classification, like, like was shown in the previous slide, is either cars for the personal use or the fleet, which is, you know, the Olas and Ubers as a B2C. There are also the huge corporate segment that, that's in India. And I've separated government from the fleet only for our purposes because it is slightly different. Um, the other thing that I'm assuming that you all are aware of is the entire phase-wise manufacturing plan. Uh, which the government has uh, very carefully thought out uh, and, and come out with a phase-wise manufacturing plan. And I'll refer to that PMP. If you're not aware of it, then, you know, today's charter is not to kind of explain to you that, but just assume that the government has set out for all the EV manufacturers a certain date-wise plan for all the different type of vehicles. Um, also, there are incentives which are now evolved from frame one to frame two. And these are excellent frameworks to follow as we mature our plans. <clears throat> also, uh, the scenario has changed in the last four or five months. Uh, and I'm sure all my colleagues here are facing the same challenges as we are. There's a demand shift. I would say there's a demand reduction as well for the fleet segment, but also a shift to safer, personalized. Uh, vehicles and you can see that uh, the market is coming back up for markets where which where, where people were sharing uh, the fleet and I mean sharing mobility they've come back to personal segment also the priorities have shifted due to this atmanirbhar or self-sufficiency so we're having to rethink what our strategy should be and just like everybody else we we break up our powertrain uh, into three parts uh, the traction system, which is the motor controller, gearbox, etc., all the battery systems and power electronics and peripherals. But we also have stuff for diagnostics and telematics, which should not be, uh, you know, it's very important to service whatever you do 
and to be able to collect data from the field so that you're continuously on an improvement path. So next slide. So what were some of the lessons that, uh, that we learned? So we started out doing the experiments in late 2016, 2017. So as I said, we're a three-year-old company and a lot of our experiments were, let's electrify the nano, something that we know well in the ICE world and let's figure out what that takes. Um, fortunately, uh, all the supply chain of the ICE world was known to us. So we looked at it and we said, look, we will classify all the different components that we have to source for an electric car into three categories, class A, class B, class C. So class A would be very specific to the EVs, obviously the batteries, the cells, the BMS, and all kinds of other things that will be listed later. Uh, also, we will develop certain other, uh, you know, class B components, which are specific to uh, EVs, but uh, they are, can be found in the IC world, such as, you know, you, you have your battery box, uh, so you have to have, uh, you know, certain components that sit around it, you have to have your electronic box, so you have, you know, your covers of it, and others. So all the fabrication, sheet metal, machine components, we classify as B. Uh, which need tooling as well. And finally, we classify all the smaller components, fasteners, plastic, rubber components, which are smaller in nature and lesser expensive as class C. So this is our classification. It has nothing to do with uh, what the uh, OEMs classify them as. The second lesson we learned, and we involved the component suppliers very early, even during our experiments, we involved them so that they were aware of what we were doing. The second thing is, as you work with your suppliers, both Indian and overseas, you've got to be somewhat lighter uh, in the CTQ, you know, critical to quality processes and the test processes as compared to ICE, because you know, you've got to do this and yet you've got to be somewhat flexible because the volumes are not that large. And you can assume that even the design, mechanical design might change. So we have evolved a set of processes that are similar akin to but slightly different and slightly lighter because of the flexibility flexibility tenacity and the uh, and the resilience that we need because of changing demands and continuous evolution so i've kind of grouped them in stages first is design development of powertrain which we what what we do we also homologate etc working with ari and the oems second is serial production consideration third is very important warranty and after sales support we've got uh, people that we have in 23 or now 26 different cities actually supporting the dealerships to provide that support so that you don't want your end customer uh, suffering for more than a couple of hours even if things were to break down also warranty support and it's very important it's very easy to go tie up with somebody in in china or taiwan or korea or the west somewhere and not worry about how much warranty are you getting. But as Amitabh had put in his previous presentation, you are fighting against people who are going to use this car for five years at least, if not seven and 10 years. So uh, I'm, I'm talking about the ICE world. So you've got to make sure that you get warranty support. Uh, otherwise, you'll be you know, stumped later on down the road. And the fourth one, which is extremely important also, there's continuous improvement that you need to do. So. Uh, never be mistaken. You will always need to improve on what you bring out to the field. You've got to either increase the battery life or you've got to in improve the efficiency as was stated earlier. And uh, in these continuously changing times, you've got to make sure that you keep uh, and the compliance changes. You know, BS6 came along. Uh, there are other changes that come along, uh, you know, and we have continuously have had to deal with that working with the OEMs and other component suppliers. So these are the four lessons in the evolution, design development lessons, production lessons, after sales lessons and warranty lessons, as well as continuous changes. So of course, Tigor, as you know, is in, in series production. We've supplied more than two, two and a half thousand of them running in the road, collecting data, et cetera, but that's all by and by. Move to the next slide. Thank you, Priyakshi. So I wanted to give some context to the data. Uh, if you look at the bottom colors, this is the evolution of our supply chain strategy from 2017 to 2020, 2021. And you can see that the number of parts are increasing, 
but uh, the number of suppliers we are trying to limit. Uh, so, you know, they say that number of moving parts in an electric vehicle, an electric car are lesser. That is true, much true. And therefore, it makes easy to maintain. But uh, never forget that there are in excess of 250 overall uh, part num discrete part numbers, even in an electric vehicle, right? And over over a thousand individual components. If you, if you go to count them, then they exceed a thousand. And at present, where we are at is we've still got, um, if you notice the middle one where we where I put up a chart in the middle, uh, you've still got eight of these suppliers coming from outside of India. You know, that includes your cells, your BMS, some disconnected contactors, electric compressor, motor control unit, and some fuses. Those as well, we are working with our suppliers to see because not only is it part of our PMP strategy, but it's also required for our Atma Nirbhar uh, ness that we reduce the, those to virtually zero as we march into the next year. We will probably turn of the year have three or four, although seven are stated in the four are stated in the slide. Look, uh, you know, we're looking at about them still to be coming from overseas. Mostly those will be coming from the battery side, which is permissible by your PMP. So I've tried to give you context uh, so that you understand that this is not a uh, you know trivial exercise of managing 50 plus suppliers and uh, a thousand plus parts in a typical electric car, uh, but also it, it is manageable. It's not impossible to do. Uh, but but look, we are already at 90% of the suppliers coming from within India. Next slide, please. So as we look into the future, and this is my last slide, I didn't want to make this long and lengthy because there are other speakers. First and foremost, my advice to everybody is try to focus on what you're good at. Uh, I have put brackets around what we today are good at, not to say that we're not working on some of the other stuff. So we've built powertrain systems for 48 volts, which are applicable to three wheelers, nanos, quadricycles, all the way to 72 volts, which is your Tigor, and to 110 volts, which is the light utility, a light light uh, commercial vehicles. Today, we don't provide, we have to be very clear, we don't provide full systems, integrated systems for 350 volts and 600 volts, although we are working on uh, uh, an integrated propulsion or motor, motor control unit for 350 plus volts, also a battery system for 600 volts, but our integrated strategy and our core strengths lie around 48 to 110 volts only. It's very important to focus. Second thing is you've got to make sure that you are relevant, affordable, and sustainable. Now, I'll give you three quick examples. One is, uh, you know, you're, I wish, uh, you know, the government representatives would be here so we could speak about uh, or brainstorm strategies of supply chain hubs um, and last mile solutions or otherwise around those hubs. Uh, the second one is we actually let go uh, one of our suppliers who was saying, look, we want to indigenize through you to say, no, no, you don't need to indigenize through us. If it's a compressor, um, you know, you're talking about electric compressor, you should work with XYZ company because we're talking about scaling and we're not talking, we cannot do everything. We don't want to do everything, although we were forced to, but we, we said, look, we'd rather have you work through a, com a, a compressor manufacturer who knows how to ma manufacture, who's done it before. And third is, continuously looking at technological options which can help you optimize the energy levels in the system not only in the car but outside the systems as well so we're working with industry partners also r d institutions to look at also guided by the ev mission of the government to look at how we can leverage new chemistries and battery technology and bring it into our power train finally the goals that we have set for ourselves and perhaps you should set for yourselves is very carefully look at the PMP strategy. PMP strategy comprises of uh, you know 18 subsystems that are defined up from two wheeler all the way to e-buses, and uh, they have set their deadlines for us. The deadline is April 2021 for all subsystems, and obviously 100% of outside the cells and BMS need to be localized. So we will stick to that strategy. Minimize the number of suppliers. You know, obviously the parts may increase due to new regulations coming in. But you've got to work with a few of them and help them scale. And finally, work on developing, you know, this is an obvious one, but it's not so obvious for, for us. 
multi-year warranty arrangements must be made. So those are some of my humble lessons in the three-year journey that we have traversed. I don't want to make it any longer. Thank you so much. Happy to answer questions.